Welcome back, everybody, to the Investors Roundtable. I'm your host, Robert Kraft. You can follow me on Twitter, at Bobby K. Kraft. That's B-O-B-B-Y-K-K-R-A-F-T. And uh, I'm really excited for today's episode. We got... Uh, we got the crew back together, as Kevin would say that he coined this term, you know, the OGs. We got the OGs back here. We got Kevin Shea, a full-time private investor at The Good Prick on Twitter. Kevin, what's going on? You had to wear the Boston hat. Like, what the, why, why are you doing this to me? Oh, it's my summer hat. Oh, it's you know, summer. I, it, just, it just generates a lot of conversation. So I, I wear it either to spite people or to get them talking. So well, it's fun. Yan- well, you know what? If the Yankees, how about this? If the Yankees finish higher in the standings, I think for at least two episodes, you have to wear a Yankee hat that I will purchase for you. Oh, you'll send it along as well. I will wear a Boston hat if Boston finishes ahead. Oh, well, there you go. That's it. That's a good, I, think, I think that's a, that's a, that's a fair one. wager, right? We'll send you a well-worn one. <laughs> no, I want that one. No, I'm just kidding. Well, this one, how big is your head? <laughs> I actually kind of have a big head. Oh, this is seven and a half. Seven and a half? Not, I mean, it's a big head. I hope the world's listening. Bobby well, you know, big. Yeah, I got a big, I got a big head. It's going to be like, you know, that's how it's going to be like when I put, when I put my hat on my 17 month old, old daughter, <laughs> just going to be like a bucket anyways. And we also got joining us because you can't get enough of Tom Brazil. You know, we just put it out our podcast episode this week. You know, it's gotten some incredible feedback. So thank you for all that. And you know what? Sure. We, we had so much fun that Tom, we wanted to have him back on today. So Tom, still hot in this on? room. Thanks it's for having hot. me back. Kevin, it's great to meet. We were talking before. I told this is going to basically just me, like you know, asking Kevin for more information about like life and and about like these different areas. He actually knows something about the world, which I think a lot of us investors could use sometimes. You know, sitting behind computers. Put my wisdom hat on then. (laughs) Put the wisdom. We're going to call that Boston the wisdom hat. No, where is the wisdom hat? I I know he wasn't talking about the Boston Red Sox hat. That's put it away for a while. (laughs) Oh, you have a wisdom hat. Okay. Oh yeah, sure. So the main, our main topic today that I really wanted to talk about, because this has been getting a ton of play, both on Twitter, vis-a-vis the Lumber Bros, um, you know, and, and just, just from personal experience and, you know, my, my, my family members that work in construction, they're seeing raw materials prices go crazy. So it, I feel like this topic's kind of starting to make the, you know, it's definitely making the rounds on mainstream media and a few other podcasts as well. And that's talking about the rising prices of raw materials, especially, in wood and lumber um, as, as probably the most prominent examples. And the question whether or not this is just a supply and demand issue versus this actual being uh, inflation, you know? So Kevin, you know, you've been posting a lot on Twitter about, you know, some of the new, your new woodwork that you've been doing and talking about how, you know, it's been getting a little bit more expensive. So, you know, let, I wanted to start with you on this. Well, you know, as you know, um, I've been trying to buy a house or build a house over the last nine months, and that uh, has been an eye-opening experience. I know that you have as well. Um, so I've had some up close and personal types of interests and in how prices are going up or what they're doing. So um, that's a little bit of background, but the prices of lumber I've been posting over the last couple of weeks, uh, the futures market on, on, on uh, lumber and, and uh, being a technical analyst it became apparent that this thing was was really, really uh, getting to the top. Um, I believe it's speculation at this point in time, but right now it's probably pulled back 30% from its top already at 1700, something like that, after going up 4X in I think less than a year. But that was pretty interesting. The So I'm following it that way. And the other thing that's quite interesting to me is I had a conversation with a woman that I know and uh, she lives in South Carolina and she has a family tree farm big, big lots of trees. She, she, she's a lumber person. And I said, what's going on with the price of lumber? And she said, it's, it's the Canadian mills. And I said, well, what do you mean? She says, they're not operating. And I said, and of course, the, now you get into Canadian politics about we're not going to operate and all that stuff. So, so she was, she was, says, I can't get rid of my wood. I can't, I, I, I can cut it down as fast as they want it, but no one's buying it because it goes to the mills. So that was something that was very interesting to me. And I, I didn't follow up on it, but it seemed like it made sense given Get, there are no mills in the United States anymore, big mills. Um, yeah. so, so interestingly, and I don't have a view on inflation, so I'm going to be like, but I, 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 we got involved in a few sawmill bankruptcies that were in the States, one in North Carolina and one in Florida. Um, they were pretty large projects and they were built for this very reason you were bringing it up, Kevin, which is there aren't a lot of sawmills um, in certain markets of the United States. Also, 
my understanding, and this is like total novice, but there, there is actually kind of two markets. There's like the Canadian sort of hardwoods, and then there's like the, I guess the sort of Southern softwoods. softwoods right. And there's like, yeah, and I'm, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but it is interesting because those, those sawmills, they still went off very cheaply, uh, pretty cheaply, I think, uh, the ones that were in uh, North Carolina and Florida. And, and and they were built for this express reason, uh, which you were talking about, which is there hadn't been a lot of sawmills in uh, a number of years that were built in these these areas. So sort of- Yeah, that's interesting. You know, As I said, it's that when there's, a, when there's a, a need, people will fulfill it, you know, and, and, and that seems to make sense, but they have to do it at a low cost. Uh, and again, you know, how do you do that environmentally? So whether or not they're bound by re restrictions, you know, I don't know whether they are or aren't, but um, it would make, it would be interesting to follow through and find out whether or not there is a, an impact on lumber prices that arises from the mills, okay, rather than mm. from the, from people not wanting to cut down trees or whatnot. This lady. Yeah. So your friend, is, so she sends her the her lumber to. She has to send it to Canada in order for it to get processed. I can't right? say that, Bobby. I didn't get I didn't get that far into the details of it, so I can't I can't okay. speculate one way or the other. But yeah, you see you see it coming down already, and what's happening technically, um, lumber has has begun to crash. Now, the other thing I'm not quite sure if you know about, but uh, if you're watching futures, um, you should be watching what's called the commitment of traders. I'm not quite sure if you know what that is, but it's a report that's produced by the federal government every two weeks. And what it does is it, it uh, tells you specifically who's buying what and who's selling. Um, they are called speculators and, and, um, and uh, operators. And what happens is that when you start to see those things deviate, you can get some information what's going on about future costs of wood and what's happening right now that the, the speculation is going way up. Okay, so there is quite a bit of speculation in the market as well. Uh, so um, you can see some of this data on futures um, pretty readily. I mean, it's, it's, it's been around forever. And um, the way it works is the, uh, the smart money bails out when the, when the stupid money goes in, <laughs> quite funny. Mm -hmm. But the same thing is true of copper or of zinc and tin and lithium and all of the commodities are going up. And I think that one of the drivers most likely is, is inflation. I mean, ultimately it's inflation and demand. I mean, housing around where we are up in Maine, houses, they're building houses like it's going out of style, but then I read it elsewhere that they're not building houses. So I don't know what the, what the regionalities are, but it seems that in some regions, the, the house built, the um, home, the new home construction market is actually suffering, it's going down. So I don't know how to factor that in either, but you know, of course, if if you can't get copper, if you can't get, you know, stuff, if people start looking at other things. And the interesting thing about it is, is that I I, uh, I I found this. I know this guy out in uh, Illinois. He, he builds concrete houses. Literally, he basically pours concrete houses, and they're becoming popular. But you know, they're not going to take over the world. But there are alternatives out there. So again, if lumber gets too expensive, people won't build the houses or they'll start to build them in other, in other materials. I think it's a, it's a decent component of cost. So it is something to worry about, right? I mean, it's, it's not like, you can't make the argument that it's a small component of the input cost. Um, what, actually, I think what, a pretty sizable housing? piece. Yeah, like it's yeah, a percentage the of the housing cost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's, it's fairly, fairly substantial. I mean, my, my thing, my kind of approach though, guys, like when this stuff is like, I take all that color in and all that, that temperature, but at the same time, it's sort of like need to find stuff from a bottom up perspective. So I don't mind being long this stuff, even if it feels overheated, if it's for an attractive price, but I definitely have to discount, you know, like I, I saw a stack the other day that was like a two, it, they just struck a deal at it's 2022 earning 2022. 2022 EBIT estimates, but a two times 2022 EBIT estimates. And you just think, Jesus, this must be what the top looks like, you know, not not the top, but just like where, you know, when you get like peak valuations um, on like numbers, like, you know, they look, it looks cheap. I mean, as value guys, I suppose, or at least for myself, considering myself as quasi value person, <laughs> I have to be careful not to like, you know, jump into boiling water. Anyway, you know, that's, that's what I worry about with all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, there are some other there are some other things I wrote about this a while ago, and that uh, when sports figures begin to create their own SPACs, you knew the yeah. top was in. I mean, it, when when the stupid people start to act like they know what they're talking about, you know the top is in. So that's quite interesting. I mean, but yeah, 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 I, yeah, that's true. You see weird stuff. I've seen a lot of times though where like people just don't anticipate like how hard and far something can run. 
Like I remember seeing there was a guy that was like the founder of like Equinex, Equinex Equinix, is yeah. like one of the large, largest co-location, like serve, like, you know, like uh, data centers and stuff. Data centers. And he was talking, it, it was from like the nineties was the interview he gave. And he was like, oh man, we used to like, you know, rack them and stack them. We were making like 200% returns on our invested capital. So like when these guys showed up and offered me like $200 million, I thought they were nuts. And now that's like a $40 billion company or something. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I do think sometimes you get these like really, I'm not saying lumber is that. I'm not trying to like make that case. I'm just trying to make, there are situations where things run a lot further than even domain people. Cause you were all sort of colored by when you came in. Like if you, if you were in a hard cyclical industry and then it sort of like, didn't become hard cyclical anymore or became less cyclical or had a nice super cycle, like you would totally miss it because you'd be like, well, this is the time to sell, right. you know, even though it's two times, like we got to sell this steel mill. Um, so I don't know. It's, 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 to me, it's much, it's harder. I'm willing to, I'm willing to take on, I'm willing to walk into the, the hot, the hot seats. I'm not sure what, what's going on with Gary over there. Gary. Yeah, uh, no, Gary, Gary's, I, I think, I think we're getting, are we getting a uh, chat roulette here? You know, we're getting, uh, we're getting, trolled. I like it. I like it. Yeah. It's like, I like it too. Am I on? <laughs> yeah, you're on. You're we on. can't see you. <laughs> oh, you're live on the air. You're, you're live on the air, man. How do I turn them? Uh, geez. All right. Gonna turn into one of those. I'm going to turn on my cat face so I can. Yeah, I can cat we, face literally we're just, we were just talking about this. <laughs> I think we need more Zoom education. My uh, I don't think we need another you know video hosting platform. There he is. There you go. Hey, look at that. I have the, uh, there it is. the camera cover on so the NSA can't watch me. Hey, wait a second. See. That looks like a real background. Is that a real background? No. My Tony's poster. You can see him, you can see him doing this. <laughs> oh, really? By the way, Kevin, that's a real hat of wisdom right there that Gary's wearing. Okay, not this. Oh yeah, my Tesla. Oh hat. yeah, yeah, yeah. Those hats that's are gonna a, go. That's a. That's gonna take you a long way. <laughs> I have an I have an opinion about Tesla. By the way, I have no opinion. <laughs> I mean, you flag. can't. You can't. That that's too good of a. That's Come too on, good let's of a. Hear it. Yeah, let's, let's hear, hear this it. opinion. I mean, Come you on. know. Take a look. Oh, take a look at the difference. Take a look at the difference between the Ford stock price and Tesla stock price right now. I love this. You like the you like the Ford news. Ford, I was Ford, sending it all to my truck friends to see if they were interested in the Ford. I truck. took a, I took a survey, and even though it was quite small, I took a survey. Of, it was simply this: if you were to buy an electric an EV truck, pickup truck, which would you buy? The F one fifty or the Tesla Cybertruck? Sixty six percent came back and said, "I'll buy the Ford truck." And one of the reasons why is because it's a proven vehicle. The cyber truck. I mean, they said these windows don't smash. <laughs> remember when they threw the rock at it and the thing just demolished? I remember that was great. Imagine, no, but I mean, the cyber the truck's really interesting. Maybe, 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 uh, right time, right time here for uh, for Ford. Are you oh, long, I Kevin? They, I you're supposed to disclose if you're long. I think the legacy is going to blow them out of the water simply because of the fact that they know how to build cars. And I still have people that I know uh, who work there. Um, and so oh, that's right. You have, a, you, have a, you, have a, you have a background in the, in the, yeah. the, the car industry. Yeah. So really, so, but, but you, you don't like Tesla, but do you like Ford? I think that like, I think in the long term that the legacy companies will take over the EV market. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's probably sense. the probabilistic bet to make. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like they have the infrastructure. They're not total dodos. Yeah, okay, maybe they were a little slow on moving, but well, that's what incumbents do. They they're both slow. They wait to make sure it works, and then right. they go in and, and they, steal it. They make sure it works. That's the interesting thing because the what's happening right now on, on autonomous drive. We're, we're moving off of commodities, but if you talk about com, um, autonomous drive, um, Ford will. Ford will stick between two and two plus, which is the one of the things where you basically have to have a person sitting be in front of the vehicle, sitting at driving, yeah. driving. Where um, Tesla has already said we can go to three or four, and of course, what's happening is that there is massive problems with that. They, uh, I saw one where they, and this is exactly the situation: is that uh, uh, one of the guys I know out there was talking. He's basically leading the autonomous vehicle drive um, effort, and what he was saying is that uh, it's very difficult to not drive under a semi truck trailer okay oh wow one of, the, right. one of the best one of the best things i saw like about six months ago was a picture of the tesla going right underneath the trailer 
And I, I, sent, a, I sent a note to my friend. I said, is that the issue? He says, yeah, it doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know that it doesn't know that something in the way. So, but since, so with, Kevin, since you know a bunch about the space, what, what, what can someone do? What do you think the best place to be here? Should you be in the batteries? Should you be in the components going in? Should you be in the big car manufacturer incumbents? Where should you I'll, be in I, this whole? I've been, I've been investing short term in Ford based upon their stock price and that the technical analysis. I just think that they're going to do well in the long run. VW doing the same thing. Um, disclosure, I am, disclosure, I'm Bobby. Very, I'm very interested in, in battery technology, but particularly interested in uh, anything that wraps around like graphene, as I mentioned earlier, I think graphene is an mm. unbelievable new material. Um, if they can, if they can produce a battery, uh, that's going to be massively disruptive in, in the way in which people will accept it because the charging uh, is 10 times as fast as, um, and this is all scientific uh, R&D at this point in time, um, but the charging promise, promises to be um, very, very fast. I mean, basically the same speed as filling up your tank with gasoline. So I, I, I'm, I think that's a five-year story, graphene. Um, of course, graphite. Uh, is certainly going to be a dominant player in the in the overall. This is, goes back to commodities. Uh, graphite will be a dominant um, uh, contrib contributor to battery technology. It's going to go. The, the amount of graphite required is massive. Uh, same thing is probably probably true with cobalt. Um, again, there are now multiple technologies that are out there. That um, there's an aluminum ion battery that's being built. Uh, so there's multiple competing. Um, technologies, but they're all based upon, you know, an existing commodity, um, which, you know, one has to go through and find out whether or not the commodities are available or what. I mean, you know, tin, cobalt, um, graphene is a, is a produced product. It's not, it's not a material where graphite yeah. is. So not Kevin, yeah. Blue Horseshoe loves graphene. <laughs> Blue Horseshoe? I had to get it in, Bobby. <laughs> Uh, it's from Wall Street. The Wall Street Blue practice. Horseshoe. Blue Horseshoe loves Anacott Steel. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> something in, no, that's what he said. They were trying to like pass inside information yeah. or something. Anyway, yeah. I digress. Oh, that's, that's too funny. So you so, wouldn't. Okay, so we got to find a graphene company. All right, now I have homework to do, Kevin. I have to find a graphene, and I need. What about copper? You know, are you long? Were you? Are you what do you thought? I think this will affect copper. Um, too I, hot already. I've already been in and out of copper, but I, I, I don't play the commodities, but I, I find stocks that are out there doing it. Um, there are some, had a, there are some, sorry, plays, but there, you have to go, you have to go to Canada for most of them, you know, for these fuel plays. Somebody so had like, mentioned a, uh, out, like a copper recycling company. Oh, there's copper um, recycling, there's lead recycling, there's everything recycling. That's, that's a, there's a lead recycling, aqua metals. I don't own it, AQMS. Uh, they were lead recycling uh, uh, play. Um, uh, they seem to be doing pretty well. The, the last the two recyclers I touched, I got bludgeoned on. What was it like? <laughs> Gary will know the name of this. What was the one that like? Uh, who was the Canadian guy? It was like Guy Spear and Workhorse, or something wasn't called Workhorse. Horse, Come on, was, help it me horse, out. was it Horsehead uh, Zinc? Horsehead. Oh, yeah, it was zinc. What they like recycling zinc or something? Yeah, I forget. I, I never really got involved in that one. I never really understood it. So I guess I'm I lucky. never understood it. It looked cheap all the way to zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so uh, cheap. Well, it's Canada, and man. That's the way of them sometimes, right? But the one thing I mean, that... to be fair, like they got out schooled in the bankruptcy process. Like Guy Spear, God love him. Like he just got totally out schooled. Like he did not know what he was doing. <laughs> Right. In U.S. bankruptcy court, and like the U.S. distress guys just walked all over them. So the guys that bought it, I think, got a pretty good deal. I can't remember the name of the firm. It's not going to come to me. Like Wild Horse, you know these like names. People come up with stupid names for firms. But it was Gray yeah. Wolf, I think it's called. They're called Gray Wolf. Gosh, now I'm going to get like hate mail from something that works there. Um, anyway, <laughs> continue. Kevin, now that I've offended three people in the course, sort of course of uh, a minute. I'm getting good at this podcasting thing. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you one name that I do own. It's a Nuvo oh, Nuvo Mond. Uh, they're oh, you, you own that. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I interviewed yeah. that company like seven years ago. Yeah, I mean they're they're getting closer and closer. I mean their their production facilities going going in. I don't own a whole lot of it. I just want to watch it. You know, you buy a you buy a small thing and you watch it. Hey, Kevin, because like I've interviewed a few graphite companies. I mean, what's yeah. what's what's the the big 
what what what's because it's it's so different you than for? you know some of these gold and silver mining companies you know what's what's their big hurdle when it comes to getting past feasibility to actually construct the mine is it more expensive to build a graphite mine than it is a gold silver mine i don't know what the cost to build the mine is i mean the, the mining the mining is far far different than the production they gotta <laughs> they gotta find the mine they gotta drill they gotta do right. all the geology they have to do all that stuff so I mean, yep. In my opinion, you have to separate the mining from the production. I mean, and then I don't know. Again, I've seen mining. I asked one guy one time. I said, "Are you a mining company or are you a product company?" He says, "We're both." And I laughed at him. I said, "You are your mind. You know, no, you're an idiot. Jesus, you know, we're both." I said, "No, you're not." Because the again, I think the thing you. Have what to do you at, want us to be, Kevin? So you buy my stock. I want you to be. I want you to be money making for me. Make me money. <laughs> I'm whatever you want me to be. So the stock uh, yeah. you, buy me. you want to buy the three. I want to buy three. I make me money. No, so there's a lot I love this though. I didn't. I didn't really thought about it. I hadn't really thought about uh, graphite. I looked, tried to find a copper play. And there was that one. The last special suit guys were following, but it just ran so hard so far. Oh. I, was just kind of, eh. yeah, I forget the name of the one I had. I've had a very short period of time. Uh, but I love. Yeah. But again, the, like the, 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 reason why, the reason why I'm into graphite is because I'm into electric batteries, electric car batteries. Yeah. So I, I think that the battery technology is going to go, uh, it's going to make significant inroads over the next couple of years. Few, I shouldn't say a couple of years, over the next five years. Uh, and when it does, um, you may need, you may, you may actually have a phone that hasn't got a battery in it. It actually has a capacitor in it and it just sucks power off the capacitor because the capacitor is, is so capable of being able to hold its charge for so long that you don't need a you don't need to be recharging a battery so really? this, this these technologies are unbelievable i mean kevin at some point i was hoping to come up with a company where we could just you know put the battery like right on the side of your thigh you know you insert it in the skin so that when you have your phone you can Yuck. just put your no, phone they're gonna, no, they're gonna in insert your pocket the phone and, it, and yeah. it'll charge while it's in while it's stuck to your ass like i figured that 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 might be something. <laughs> mommy, <laughs> mommy is like gonna have a career as like a science fiction writer. Jesus Christ, that's right. Well, if it doesn't work out in microcaps, you know. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all right. Let's. I want to bring Gary in on this. Gary, okay. So Gary. go back. Go back to our to the original topic. You know, we we I've already went down on like, anything that I've heard so far. <laughs> that's that's hard to do. I have opinions on lots of different things, but. You, you got your I'm out of my element when we're talking about car batteries or cell phone batteries for that matter. I just want, you know, I just want Apple not, not to brick my phone on an upgrade. That's, that's all I'm looking for is it really batteries. Yep. Fair enough. My wife just my wife just replaced her phone because her battery was down to like 70%. Wasn't even holding charge. So she, bought, she mm -hmm. had to buy a new a new phone. Yeah. Would, would crazy. You, yeah. So so Gary, real quick. So, you know, the original topic that we were talking about today is supply demand dynamics versus you know is this signs of inflation you know what's your what's your thoughts on this just in general and you know i'm sure you're going to come up with a rabbit hole that all three of us will want to then go down no i, I think it's i think it's interesting i think the pandemic up, upended a lot of the uh the order and i'm getting a call from kentucky i'm not taking a call from kentucky um anyway Loop them in, bring them on the pod. <laughs> yeah, bring them on. You know, I've been I've been hearing all these different things about like um, like these container ships, like the, that whole supply train is completely cocked. Um, and then you know just things like you weird weird supply things like you wouldn't think of. Like I was listening to a podcast with some uh, HBS professors, and they were talking about how like they can't find a tent because like the 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 way that they're shipped there's like a strap that they hold them down by and they can't get the strap and so like it's just like all sorts of like really really weird stuff that like you would never think of um got this got disrupted in the supply chain issues and i just think it's i mean i went through i was sitting with my partner eric yesterday and uh the ft had a whole list of things that were going up in price and i said okay let me read these off to you and you tell me which ones of these things do you think are temporary and which ones are permanent and it was like Okay, bacon. Well, that seems kind of temporary to me. You know, uh, corn. Okay, they're just going to plant more next year. And so I'm going down the list of these things, and it's like some things are hard to get more of, and uh, but most things I think, you know, the cure for high prices are <laughs> are the high prices. But yeah. you know, the, the 
que... <coughs> Excuse me. You got his point across. I'm like, I'm like, it's all COVID. Um, the cure for a cough is more coughing. I know, cure, cure for more cough. But I was talking to like the labor shortage thing, like that's a real thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like that, that's probably the biggest supply demand imbalance issue as I see it from like a longer term perspective because, um, you know, sort of like, okay, lumber's way up, but like, I just sort of think that like, these, these industries where capacity was disrupted, if it brings more capacity, that's probably the worst thing for prices long-term. So, you know, because capacity in an, in an industry, once it's there, it it doesn't really come back out very fast. Like the, the these guys, um, these UK guys, Thomas, that wrote this book on it called, uh, you probably read it, it's yeah. uh, Capital Cycle the Investing. The yeah, Marathon guys, right? Marathon guys. Yeah, Marathon, guys. Oh, isn't yeah, that marathon where, uh, but out of London, Marathon. Marathon out of London. Isn't that where uh, like Nick Sleep and those guys started? They came out of Marathon? I mean, they, I don't know if Nick Sleep came out of Marathon, but there was a, like a little diaspora of people. Like you'll see this with like big firms that are quite illustrious, like when they sort of yeah. shut their doors. It's like Tiger Club, right? You have like Julian Roberts shuts down and then like people are like, oh my God, he influenced so many people. Yeah, but also like Matt, the thing basically blew up and everybody, not blew up, but you know, it sort of shuts it down. Great, now I'm offended Julian Robertson. Um, yeah. You know, everybody, you know, goes out into the world and so you get like a diaspora kind of, I guess, you know, DLJ or something like that, or, you know, right. it works with Mike Mocha and, and then things like that. And they're like, oh, they were so influential. Yeah, they were, but also like imagine if like a firm that was like, you know, a hot shot firm goes under. I mean, in Marathon's case, they just, I think they just sort of like, I don't think it was performance. I think they just sort of were like retiring. And I think they seeded it through their spinoffs. I mean, eventually you get tired of dealing with outside people asking about how they're how you're managing their money and you just sort of hand it back to them right like isn't that nah, never yeah <laughs> um but, but like the like the, it's like the, i love when people like come to the kitchen and tell me what i'm doing right and wrong <laughs> somebody asked me like like why don't you do some of this weirdo stuff for like on a larger scale and i'm like i don't want to answer questions about it like i don't i don't want to hear other people's thoughts and opinions like uneducated thoughts and opinions on the matter um but you know the labor shortage stuff. I think that's that's a bit more real, um, and I sort of in the in the states here we've got these enhanced unemployment benefits, and people are making more money staying home than they are showing up the jobs. That's, that's absolutely so, right. Um, I was talking to a buddy of mine mother. yesterday. What's that? He's telling my mom. My mom's a bankruptcy lawyer, and she talks about this all the time. Why would anyone file for bankruptcy? They make more money on unemployment than they will work. And I'm yeah, like, okay, I, I mean, okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not like a MAGA hat wearing, you know, whatever. I'm more of like a. No, she can walk you through the math. She can walk you through. Well, it's six hundred dollars for this, and you get three hundred dollars for this. Oh, and no, well, so in, yeah, in, yeah. in New Jersey, it's like four hundred bucks a week. I think you get plus there's a three hundred dollar, you know, federal kicker. So it's like seven hundred bucks a week. If it's a forty hour work week, it's seventeen fifty an hour, give or take, right? If I do my math right, it feels like it might. That's about right. And and so, like. I don't know. You can sit home and do that. The first ten thousand dollars of them are tax free. I don't know if you own FICA on the rest of it or not, but like, like it's hard to it's hard to compete with that. I got a buddy that owns a flooring business in Ohio, very very successful flooring business, and you know I just, it, he's trying to fill up a warehouse, and you know he gets twenty applicants for every job posting, maybe fifteen of them schedule appointments, and only one of them show up for the interview. They're all just trying to prove that they're looking for work. Yep. And, and so you know, does this last as long as the federal like? I don't know. You could sit home and play Fortnite and trade crypto and get, you know, unemployment from the government. Or you know, Thomas is like, I'm really calling him out on the floor of the floor. Dude, like, Jesus, Gary, what did I do to you? I haven't like, insulted you yet. <laughs> yeah, like Tom. Tom, has, he's looking this way because he's got his Fortnite screen going on right here, and he's got his crypto <laughs> like, screen going. On. I mean, I, 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 I totally get it. I just, I just, I, I think from a social policy perspective, it's not not great and so you're, you're not you're not a fan of basic basic income i mean you're saying we basically somehow walked into basic income without realizing it i think we walked into basic income without realizing it and kind of backdoored into the fight for 15 because the employers have to compete with 1750 coming from the unemployment benefits so you've you've sort of backed into a new minimum wage uh which is fine and all but like you know eventually what's going to happen is if you're out of the labor force long enough like your skills deteriorate you know you you like as an employer, I look at somebody who's been out of the work workforce for several years and you sort of wonder why, you know, it's, it's, wanna, yeah, it's a good deal if you can get it. So like, I, I kind of think like, I, I don't know, like if I was studying public policy, I would continue to pay these people whatever through the end of it, 
even if they found a job and like just get people back in the workforce and but that's not uh you know i don't set social policy you know i don't control i don't control the way the world works so damn it but i do think that that's real um and it's going to have la more lasting impacts i mean the supply stuff so we're just gonna be flooded with supply next year and a lot of the stuff that's more commodity based it's you know cost of production will fall um and that may not be true and that may not actually be true of oil uh, I'm, I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm old enough to remember when Democrats were bad for big oil. I actually wonder if they're kind of good because they're going to regulate supply discipline uh, through fiat, you know, through executive orders and stuff. But, uh, you know, so it's, it's just weird. It's like, it's, there's all, I, I, it seems like there's never been more distortions out there. Yep. And it's really hard to get a handle on what's actually happening. Uh, and so in, with that, I mean, for this bulk of what we do, the answer to what we do with this is sort of, nothing we sort of keep doing what we what we believe works but um it's hard don't you think can i can i can i take the other side of this like worry i feel like there's a lot of people talking Please about do. inflation and are these numbers sustainable like everything i end up like looking at or talking to someone they, there's always like well are these numbers sustainable like that's like every conversation goes down to that it was like the same conversation you had in the middle of covid when they were like yeah but tom like aren't their revenue zero right now i'm like well, yeah, they are zero right now. Uh, people don't go to the gym during COVID, although, uh, you know, so, so there are things like that. Um, I don't know. I kind of think all the volatilities, I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound too flippant, but it's, it's kind of fun. And it also like adds a lot of opportunity. Uh, yeah, uh, and so like, I have really no view on any of this stuff, but of course it, the Howard Marks really is, I think some people, I, just, I think don't like him. Now I'm going to offend him. Uh, I'm just gonna see how many people I can fit in this podcast who are my heroes. Um, and he says like, oh, you know, you take the temperature of the market, but you don't, you know, you don't use it to like in instruct, you just use it to like inform yourself about like what's going on and kind of take the temperature of where you are. It kind of like makes you kind of understand where you are in a cycle. Um, yeah. And I'm really butchering the way he says it, but some people don't like him because they think, oh, he's kind of like just a, ta a talking head, but he's still right. I mean, he's still right. I mean, which is, it's still helpful to take these temperatures. I mean, if something's going off at two times, EBITDA, there's probably a reason. You know, I was having a conversation with someone last night and they were talking about a business that, you know, seven times, you know, uh, EV EBITDA for this business or seven times free cash flow, whatever you want to use, um, let's call it free cash flow, is cheap. But is it cheap if you're like at the kind of topish side of the cycle? I don't know. That's what the business is trading for. It's trading for seven times. And so, you know, you get into these discussions, um, but I think all that creates opportunity for us because that's our job, right? We're sort of, out there hunting and you know we're talking about the stuff bottom down of a sort of top down but then at the end of the day you're sort of investing bottom up so yeah. i love all this volatility i think it's you know it's interesting it's never dull that's why it's so fascinating right like do we does anybody on the call like know the answer to any of this stuff no and so it's, uh, it's like but that's what makes it fun uh yeah uh, but anyway or challenging. I've, been, I've been spending more time trying to figure out what is you know, it's all in relation to what what's it, what's it, what's in the price, right? Like what's what's in the market right yeah. now, and you know, what's in the market right now is really, it's it's kind of hard to tell actually um, in a lot of instances because it's we've never we have nobody who's alive has dealt with something like this before, and so like what we're what I'm trying to spend time figuring out is what's going to last longer than people think, what's going to revert faster than people think and like that's the whole game right it's it's all expectations theory and it's hard but like why should our job it's be over easy? under yep. it's kind of like go it's, ahead it's Kevin, what were you saying? a little bit fascinating because when you get down to these things is how much stuff will be baked in um my wife and i had these conversations about uh, things that we're finding uh during this during this uh, period that we're trying to build this house um and it, it kind of comes back down to this is that when prices go up based upon the ideas that lumber is expensive, do prices recede when the lumber comes back down again? It's a little bit like a conversation we've had when the airlines basically were, when the gas prices on the airlines were ridiculously high and they put in a, subs, they put in a fee for, for gasoline, for air, um, um, aviation fuel. Did that ever come back out when, when aviation prices dropped? No. And so, so there's a very interesting subset here is, is that will, will providers, will resellers or sellers drop their prices or maintain them 
uh, at the same level so that uh, they make even more money. So again, if a house is if a house now is being built for say six hundred thousand dollars, pick a number, um, and and a, 20% of it is lumber and when lumber costs, lumber prices go down by 50%. Does the house price go down? I mean, this is the thing that's interesting to me is how does it impact the everyday, everyday individual? I'll give you one thing also, we talk about um, there, I see that there's actual greed going on in this market right now, in the housing market. Um, we were talking to a guy to, up in Maine, you wanna, you don't get your own, well, you have to drill a well to get your water and the drilling the well costs you $8,000 typically over the last, number of years, $8,000, $8,500. It's costing you $16,000 now, okay? Just to drill a well. Okay? I don't know whether that's greed or whether or not that's just speculation that the that the well driller is doing or why. I mean, there's no, there's, there's nothing in the way of this guy. He has his own equipment. The equipment's already there. It's already purchased. It's already amortized, all that stuff. And all he's doing is making, all he's doing is doubling his price. I mean, I don't see any supplier demand issues with that or anything of that type. All I see is pure greed. Okay, um, whether I'm right or not, I don't know. But how much of the stuff is pure greed going on now? I mean, it's, it's is it well, the, the other question with this is like the pricing el elasticity. How much of it, you know, where where is it elastic and what is it? Where is it inelastic? Is another interesting question. Um, you know, I kind of think like it's hard to back wages off once you've raised them to seventeen fifty or twenty bucks an hour. Like I don't think people are going back down to. Like I was talking about, like I was like, so when this customer goes away, you're gonna be hiring people. Like, are you back off of? 17, 18 bucks an hour? Or are you going back down to 14? What are you doing? And he's like, well, I really can't do that. Cause like, you know, you can't cut people's pay. And then the other thing is if you hire somebody new at a lower level, like these people like hang around and they talk, you don't want that. So it's like, it's kind of going to be a little stickier I think on the wage front, at least uh, that doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere from there but it's, it's stickier on the wage front. That's for sure. Well, wages will drive where, where, it's where appropriate. It will drive automation for certain. There's no question about that. I mean, Gary, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, no, Go. no, 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 go, go Bobby. No, no, I was going to say, I actually just saw a news release from Microcap yesterday, actually making a, a public announcement saying that they're, um, <clears throat> that they announced that it's a $20 per hour minimum wage for all employees. So who knows, that might, that might now be a thing. Where, where, well, the yeah. thing about it is, if you also go back and look at stuff that goes on, there was social engineering. I mean, social investing many years ago, and um, Ben and Jerry's was probably was ben, ben and Jerry's at the time. They, they did go public, and one of the things that they claimed that they were going to do was that they were going to have the the CEO make I forget what the number was make no more than five x of the lowest employee, some number of that type. Okay, and and that was fine, but then again, they held like four million shares. <laughs> you know, right. so. There was, there's a little bit of, um, I don't know if it's hypocrisy or whatever, but um, so there, there, there have been ways that there have been means that people have used to try to keep this like equality, uh, e some, some level of equality in, in organizations. But, it, it, but what's, what's also happening is that more and more automation is, is being driven into it. So you're cutting out people. So again, if prices go up, something's going to change. As, I, as we were saying earlier, is that opportunity, Tom was talking about opportunity. I think crises of this type or any th any sort of disruption of this type create more opportunities. I mean, it's just, a, it's just the nature of the beast has been and always will be. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's Sorry about your world, Kevin. I won't forget <laughs> that. It was a very vivid image of this guy. <laughs> on the what? Trying to, on the well, you know, it's not the worst than someone trying to yeah. Oh, the well, Pulling the well, the driven, the drying, the well. Yeah, yeah, I can do it myself. Get a couple spoons and start to work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up there. I'll come, no, I'll come up to Maine. Where in Maine are you, by the way? Uh, Maine's beautiful. We're going to totally put Cape Porpoise. Here. Cape Porpoise. Cape Porpoise. That just sounds beautiful. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, you, I'll come Kevin, the lobsters. Real quick, Google. I mean, real quick, Kevin, I, I have to ask, you know, when you're looking at different, um, you, you know, a uh, 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 bill or was, was it? different potential uh, uh, mock-ups for building the house, you know, you almost have to think about it like a trader. It's like, okay, do I accept it today? Or do I have to accept, should I wait maybe a week from now? Cause like, I know my, my sister-in-law, like she does all, she does all the, the, the um, putting together, you know, uh, what's, what's yep. the, it's, or, you know the bids that's yeah, right yeah. she puts she puts together all the bids and she's like you know she'll give it one week and then the prices of all the materials go up over you know the next week and she has to re she has to recreate it resubmit it because right. it's you know she I'll has tell to you what's going on client. it's crazy I'll, I'll tell you what's going on bobby the since since i live in 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 a lobstering town um 
when you buy lobster, you get it at market price. There is no real price. It's it's X Y Z. However we caught, it's always market price. Okay. The weirdest thing that came across was that the the local there's a big hardware store called Hammond Hammond Hardware, uh, um, Hammond Lumber. And when you walked in the door to buy lumber, it was market price. Literally, every board for the linear for it was basically not not the same yesterday, the same today. So it defines what you were just talking about, how things have been changing. And the other thing about it is that you sound like you're a trader. Um, this is this is classic because it's exactly where I'm sitting. Now, both my wife and I. Do we buy it now or do we buy it later? Do we get the price? Do we get a discount now if we wait? No. All these we're asking all these questions. Do we get a discount? The more interesting thing was was uh, that really came across was the uh, as a trader. What I have come to learn by a lot of mistakes is don't chase. Just simply don't chase price. If you're going to do it, you want to chase it in a, in a, in a much um, more restrained fashion. <clears throat> I was damned if I was going to chase price when I was asking when I putting in offers for the house. Okay, we did put in offers. We did put two offers in, both over the over the ask. I mean, over the yeah, over the ask, and we got swamped by somebody else who paid cash for it. They was, I mean, who's the biggest, stu who, who's, I mean, is somebody stupider than I am? I don't know. And the question we have is, is that will those, will those, will those houses come back in the market in a year after the person from Texas learns that when you're living in Maine, it ain't the same as Texas, and they want to try to sell the house, are they going to be able to sell the house for the same thing they paid it for? Or will they actually take a, take a loss because the, the market has come back to something no, near normal? So there hey, is a, quite a bit of it, Robbie. I was just saying, there's quite a bit of trader brain um, being used in these in these uh, you know, these things. Yeah. You know. Hey, and now and now that Bitcoin is a legal tender in El Salvador, now they have, you have to think about it on the other side too. It's like, okay, wait, do I? I got to think about the pricing of the lumber, and then also I got to think about the pricing of my Bitcoin. I could give less Bitcoin for the price. This that. I mean, lumber and Bitcoin prices is down. Nobody Bitcoin, can understand Bitcoin this. Going down to, Bitcoin is going down to 10. Wait, 000. correlation? No, I'm just kidding. No, well, <laughs> they're both, they both, going, they're both going the wrong way. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a funny story about El Salvador. I don't know how many criminals still exist in El Salvador, but over the history of the country, they've always been corrupt, 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 corrupt. Bad, right? It probably has more criminals in it than anybody else. And who, who owns most Bitcoin? Criminals. They're laundering money. It's Bitcoin is the new. You're really, insult, you're really insulting Tom. Why is he a Bitcoin holder? I'm a Where Bitcoin you holder. I'm I here. I have to. I have to uh, to drive here, but I can hear everything. I'm, okay. I'm highly insulted, Kevin. I'm not coming for lobster, and I won't help you with your well now. I'm very upset. Well, you know, there's a big there's a big word that begins with F that um, I probably shouldn't use here. So up up yours. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Tom, are you are you riding your bike to your? To Tom, are you I, riding I your? Are you, oh, come on! You got to give everybody a look and see a beautiful port. I can't oh, you're not really anymore. gonna see much. I have my mask on. I got a dog barking at me. This is where we are here, people. This is a beautiful Fort de Marmi. Uh, I'll take it off. But no, I mean, I'm I'm a. I wouldn't say Kevin. This is this a longer conversation? Uh, this is a whole topic. But I, I, you know, I understand people are incredulous of of crypto and i also think there's so many ways to make money like you don't have to be into you know lumber or or you don't need to be into crypto you don't need to be into lots of things just do the things you know that make sense to you honestly right. there's there's so many ways to make money so i don't i don't i don't ever I'm not buy like high sell higher crypto that, well i, I, I agree with this know, like one of the things that I, that I had to learn was like the ways that i know how to make money and like like does the investing that I'm doing just jive with my personality and my makeup? Yeah. And I learned that by losing money all kinds of different ways. Yeah. And sort of, uh, you know, eventually what happens is you stop losing money and then maybe, you know, you make some money. And then, you know, as, as you've learned to play within your game, hopefully you get better and better at it. And yep. uh, Yeah, it's fascinating because it, it, it doesn't have to involve crypto. I mean, no, it can do anything. Uh, the, yeah. only, the only thing is, is pick what you pick what you feel comfortable at. You said like it has to like Gary was saying, it's more like a lifestyle thing. You have to it's to fit your personality. And one of the things that I I know I suck at is day trading. It's mm -hmm. actually hourly trading. I suck at it. Okay. Um, I don't know why. It just totally it get your your emotions get totally changed out. So I agree with that uh, that you, you you should trade with what you want. I don't trade futures. I don't trade uh, biotech. 
because I, I just don't want a binary event whacking me. Um, just don't lose the money. You know, it's one of those things. It's, it's, I think there's a lot to it. Money management, the whole idea, learn, learn this stuff, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I read um, a lot of the Jack Schwager books. I don't know if you guys have read those, yeah, but yep. uh, I mean, yep. the one thing, I mean, the only, don't, all these guys made money different ways. The one thing yep. I learned from it was that like, there's lots of different ways to make money. You just get to figure out which one yep. is going to work for you. Yep. And uh, it's a self, it's, it's a self discovery process as much as it is an education and markets uh, process. And yep. I think people, there's a lot of people who don't realize it's a self-discovery process and uh, maybe uh, maybe never realize it's a self-discovery process. But uh, yep. for me, well, it's a constant read. process of like collecting learnings and self-discovery and then sort of just trying to gradually expand my comfort zone, what I'm able to do, what I know, what I think I know. And, um, you know, just... If you can just expand it a little bit every day, you know, you can look back after 10 years and say, wow, that's a, that's a, that's a lot, that's a, that's a lot that I've learned along the way and a lot of interesting people that I've met. And, you know, I know a lot about myself now that I didn't know before. And, you know, you could sort of like, I don't want to say transcend the game, but like, because I don't think that that's possible, but like you certainly transcend yourself a bit. And I, I'm using the word transcend because I'm involved in a company who, a gold mining company whose goal is to he stated he stated his goal and i've never heard anybody say this before to transcend valuations for or transcend valuations for gold company i'm like what a crock of bullshit like i understand that sure yeah i mean like what, what the hell does that even mean like it's, it's like, good. It's like that's a as far as promoter promotion goes that's that's pretty good that's i mean you might as well have come out and said as a ceo i'm looking to self-actualize like what the <laughs> fuck does that mean <laughs> Like, and like, as a shareholder, I kind of hope he does succeed in transcending valuations, whatever the hell that means. But I just can't believe I've got this much invested in a guy that's this dumb. You're never, never going to know if it's a goal or not. It's a perfect goal setting. You know, it's like, it's kind of a washy thing. Doesn't really mean anything. Sounds great. Hey, yeah. I mean, that I sounds, agree, like, Gary. A good, sounds like a good I, political, I, like, slogan transcend the, evaluation <laughs> i think the schwager books are actually quite good to read as, as an investor and not only that but you will read completely different ideas about how to make money than what you yeah. think you're doing it it's, it's fascinating to me that some guys are basically doing the one guy was doing it um by just he 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 actually scoured uh twitter i think it was something like that much faster than anybody else could and so what he was able to find was he was able to find trending activities before anybody else. And he invested simply on those trends. The other guy was, was something he, 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 was, he was doing events. I think Keel is an event driven um, investor as he mentioned in the past, but you know, we sit down and say, well, what events? You know, the second, well, you know, when something happens, it's Jesus. You know, I, you, I think, really I think Tom and I are the, of that same sort of variety. I can't speak for, I'm not gonna- An event guy, take yeah. a sizzle, event, event driven. Also, like for me, I'm a misplaced bed guy. Like I'm, I try to be as agnostic as possible because I realize, like, I'll hear about something and I'm like, oh man, I don't know, for profit prisons. I mean, like, oh my god, I try to be as agnostic as possible, even though like I can't help myself. So they're just like, I just won't go there. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, ch ch uh, check your priors at the door, right? Like, like uh, uh, spacs. Spacs are terrible, right? Like, nobody's ever made money in spacs. Well, people made well, money in spacs this year. Yep. I'm a, I'm a big believer in the, the the Schwager books. Like, there's a few influential moments for me. And I sort of like, when I read, uh, there was one, he did an interview with Jamie Mai, who you guys might know from the, the big short book. And like, when that guy just described what, what he was doing, it, it for me, like, I, I read about these other investors and like once or twice for me, it's sort of been, it must have been like, like, like somebody in my, like, like when Springsteen saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Like he just knew what he wanted to do with his life, right? Like, and when I when I read certain interviews like that, like Jamie Mai was one. Uh, I read another one recently in uh, what, what book? What, what the hell's the title of the of the William Green book that he just put out? But he interviewed the guys from uh, that Tom and I were talking about Nick Sleep um, from Nomad, and I was like, like sign me up, like like this is like just really speaks to me. And it's like when I the more I learn about some of these other investors this way, it's like. Eventually, every once in a while, you just come across something that like really speaks to you. 
and like in the in the Schwager books, the Jamie Mai interview, like that's all mispriced bets because that's always that's always looking for, or not I should say always looking for, but most of what was described was just looking for you know a, a mispriced bet, you know, making taking something that's priced on a bin, uh, on a on a bell curve that's actually a binomial distribution and taking a big ass bet on it if you've got an idea of what you think the probabilities are, like oh. like like yeah, like hell yeah, like like that 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 speaks to me. Some of those guys were making huge bets. I mean, they were bets, to be honest with you. And then you look at someone like uh, Peter Brandt, who who doesn't make any giant bets. He makes a lot of small bets. You know, so it's really quite fascinating how the whole, as I as we as we we're uh, uh, contemplating this whole thing. I mean, there's so many different ways of making money, and so many different investors who have so many different means of being able to make money, or at least try to make money. It's fascinating how the how the, how they spread throughout uh, um, the ideas. I mean, you know, whether it's cultural or uh, what not, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I, it's, 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 it was fascinating to me. Right. No, I love those books. And you, they're, they're all, even though they look like they're all different new editions or whatever, they all have different people in them. The social arbitrage guys are interesting. The traders are interesting. Oh. The mispriced bets, the macro theme through equities, all these guys with different strategies. They're amazing. Love it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm on, I'm on board with all that. So, all right, guys. Oh, Gary, you, you were going to say? I'm just wondering what else we got here, Bobby. I was going to say, I think that's a good place to end it right there. So uh, I think we covered we covered more than just uh, raw materials, mispricing, and inflation today. I think we we hit we hit everything, which is good. So uh, with that, you know, let's get where everybody can go and find more information about you and follow you on social. Uh, Gary, you want to start there? I'm on the interwebs. I, my, my company has a website. Uh, I have a podcast with Eric that we do sometimes in the market trenches. Uh, I was talking to somebody today that might be good to come on. So uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I'm bad at this stuff, despite the that was, fact that I have that was a podcast. Pretty good. That was pretty good. In the market trenches, with Gary Reeve and Eric Fury, you can find that anywhere you get podcasts, and it's also on the SNN Network. We find our podcast podcasts. providers. Gotcha. All right, Tom, where can people go and find you or book a tennis date with you? Yeah, National yeah, Man sorry, I appreciate being flexible. No, uh, you know, go to my website, 507 Capital, it's the numbers 507, and I'm on the interweb, I'm, I'm around, you can find me, Google my name, it's spelled funny, E-R-A-Z-I-E-L. Uh, always happy to chat with people, love learning, and always love different perspectives, so thanks for having me on, and, and Kevin, great to meet, so it's nice to meet another fun guy out in the market, so. I'm a fun guy, yeah, a real mushroom. <laughs> I'm coming for the well. I'll still have. I'll still break lobster with you. Is that what they say in Maine? They don't say break bread. They break lobster. No, they eat. They eat lobster. Lobster. <laughs> oh, okay. Gosh, Gosh, I can't get in with these Maine. These right. are just like, won't let me be a local. Manies. Yeah, no. We just we try we try to use the local talk, and they just won't. They just won't let us. No, but, they won't accept me. But that's and Kevin, where can people go find you on Twitter? I'm still at the good prick on Twitter, <laughs> and I'm surging again. Oh, you're surging. Oh, like yeah. it. you're, are you over a thousand? Self actualizing? Are you transcending Twitter? And, and I'm, he's transcending. I'm a transcendor. I'm, a trans a I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not an influencer on, on Twitter. I'm a transcendor. You know, that blue check mark is right around the corner. I don't know if I can, whatever. I can't say. Never mind. Have you yeah, so, the blue check mafia? Yeah, the blue check, the blue check mafia. Yeah, All yeah. right, guys. Well, this has been a lot. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys for doing this. Uh, you can find every episode of the Investors Roundtable on the Planet Microcap podcast audio stream and also on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SNMWire. I'm your host, Robert Kraft. Thank you all. See you next time. Bobby, thank you.